we've got a piece of half inch aluminum bar stock and we're going to use this to make our plopper prop for our for our stripers so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure the width of this thing and it's one and seven eighths we're going to find the middle and we're going to mark it and we're going to use a punch to mark the middle of this thing We've marked the middle of our aluminum. Now we're gonna use our hole saw and we're gonna cut this aluminum out. The aluminum is very sharp on the edges. Make sure that you wear a glove and after you get the pilot hole started, then you'll wanna put a piece of angle iron on here to where it can't spin and clamp it down. I'll show you as we go. We are going to cut a, a hole, a, a billet out with a hole saw. This is a Milwaukee hole dozer. These are made for steel, but they work really good for cutting aluminum. Now I'm gonna go slow, so I won't need a lubricant. But what we're gonna do is first things first, we're, I've measured to the center of my billet and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna take my punch and I'm gonna start a divot. And I don't know if you can see that. Let me get it to where the light hits it just right. See the divot? That's my center punch. Now I know exactly where the center is. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start this process with my hole saw. And turn, turn this thing on. First of all, this stuff is really sharp, so you want to use a glove. Make sure you use a glove because if you're if you're drilling a hole in this stuff or you're cutting a piece out and it starts to spin, this edge is really sharp on aluminum, so you want to make sure you don't get cut. Started my hole. It's going to drill right through this aluminum pretty fast. And once I get this pilot hole drilled, then I will take this piece of angle iron and snap it down to where it'll hold the aluminum in place as the as we cut out a larger hole. Okay, I've got it cut out here. So I can get it off here without breaking my bit. Okay, let's cut this Slide that out. All right, I'm gonna make sure I sweep off my press. Have a clean working surface. Now, I don't want this clamp to be in the way of my aluminum that I'm cutting out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to angle it to where it fits through the hole and I'm going to push this and start the hole. Okay, got it set. Now I'm going to set my angle iron here with my clamp. I'm going to set it right up against it and I am going to clamp this down. Now, I did that so that I would have a fence so that this thing could not spin and get out of control on me and hurt, and cut me or fly through the room or anything. So now I've got it locked in place and all I've got to do is start my drill press and start cutting through this aluminum billet. This is a half inch aluminum billet. <laughs> I, and I'm not using lubricant because I'm going to weld this and I want to make sure I, there's no oil on this thing. So I'm just going to cut it slow. Once I get halfway through, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to start cutting, on, cutting it from the other side. That way, this piece of aluminum doesn't get stuck inside my hole saw bit. Raise that up, take this out. Now, as I said before, make sure you clean off your workspace so it sits flat. So as you can see, I've got this thing cut a little over halfway through. And so, I don't know if you can see it with the glare, 
but I've got it cut a little over halfway through, so I'm going to turn it over and cut the other way so I'll have a little exposed area to grab and take this out of my hole saw. My pilot hole allows me to line that right back up where it needs to be. Okay, I've cut through and as you can see, I can take and I can, I have enough, since I flipped it over, I have enough that I can grab a hold of that and get this out of the way. I can grab a hold of that and work that out of the, the bit. There you go. Now I've got a billet. Now I'm going to have to go back and clean this edge up, but I've got two billets. So... It won't take much to take a flapper wheel and smooth these off. There is the center part of our splasher prop. Now I'm going to cut out my splasher arm for my splasher prop. <laughs> okay, first thing I'm going to do is I've got a piece of aluminum here. I'm just going to square it up with this cutoff saw. So in order to make the plopping noise, I'm going to use a piece of PVC one inch cap. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the proper arm about the about that width right there. The width of my cap against the fence. Okay, here is my splasher arm. I'll cut a groove in here like this. This will go inside here and it'll hold that in and I'll have one on the other end that faces the other way and that will be my arm that rotates on my trolling motor and splashes. This is going to be my center dial. I'll use a luma, luma weld to, uh, to secure those to the prop itself or to secure it to the centerpiece. And that's pretty much going to be our prop. We'll have to adjust our hole to fit our trolling motor. Okay guys, so what I've done is I've got a piece of aluminum here that I'm going to use for my splasher prop arm. It's going to rotate around an axis it's going to have a cup on each end. I'm just going to cut a hole in here, stick this through, pin it, put some epoxy around it to where it can't come out and it won't move around. All right, then I'm going to do the same thing with one on the other end. That way when it spins on my trolling motor, it'll make a plopping noise or a splashing noise for the striped bass. And I'll take my flapper wheel with 120 grip uh, and I'll polish this up. And then what we'll do is we'll drill a little bitty hole here and we'll be able to pin it. We'll drill one here on this end, pin it, and then we'll find center. That way it'll spin perfectly. We will put this on the, in the middle and that's our splasher prop. We're going to put some aluminum weld on this and, and heat it and that will hold that together. I have to put a groove in here to make sure it engages our, our uh, trolling motor. Okay guys. So now I've got my pieces cut out, but they've got rough edges on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my flapper wheel on a four inch grinder and I'm just going to smooth that out all the way around. I'm going to smooth the rough edges, the sharp edges off this piece that's going to be my, my splasher prop, uh, the blade that spins. And I'll do this on all three of them. Make sure you wear your PPE when you're messing with aluminum. That one's good. Okay, got that smoothed off. All right, so I've got my pieces. All right, guys, now I just need a piece that is about, not quite three inches across. So I'm using a three inch hole saw, but that gives me a diameter of about three and three quarters or something. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place this. Now I'm, I'm using a, 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 this is a shallow piece of, of aluminum this time. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a board underneath it and that board, that way when I go through, I won't be able to, I won't cut into my metal and dull my blade, dull my bit. I'm going to spray a little lube on it, lubricant. Almost done. All done. 
As you can see, I cut a hole in my plate. Now, before I can use this one, you got to really clean that thing up with acetone or it will not stick. All right, let's go just check and see if it's the right size for my prop. Then I'll have to clean up the edge with the flapper wheel again. So I'm gonna go clean up the edge before I go out there so I can have an idea how accurate it will be. Alright, that's pretty hot, but I got it all cleaned up with my flapper wheel. Now then, I'm going to go out to see if it's about the right diameter for my trolling motor. Okay, let's see here. <coughs> so, this has to be the inside diameter of this here. How I'm going to test that. Let's just see how it fits on my prop. Look at there. Good enough. Perfect. So this will, I'll groove this out. This will end up coming in here. Then I'll have my little round piece with my blade. And it'll all go on there. And then you see, see this little pin? This little pin here, I've got to cut a groove in this thing. Notch it to where it's that long. So that this right here pin... Uh, it'll pin right down in there and that'll hold this here against the uh, It'll hold that to where it will not uh, Slip once I weld that all together Got to get my hole a little bit bigger. That's gonna fit just fine Okay guys This is gonna have to have a notch. I'm gonna have to notch it as you can see I want to notch it that much right there it's not that big of a deal just take and notch it with a file or uh, with a dremel tool and that'll that'll allow that thing to catch and it'll spin well, hang on to your pen do not lose your pen I'm gonna go, in, go inside and see what I can find to notch this with okay so I'm gonna have this I'm gonna have this and then I'm going to have this. And those right there are going to be the parts that fit for my uh, splasher prop. First things first, though, I'm going to have to figure out how to cut the groove in this thing this long. Let's see how long this thing is. This thing is a little over an inch. So I'm going to mark, take an inch, and I'm going to make it just a hair bigger on each side and so I'm gonna have to notch this all the way across here so that this pin will slip down in here now how to do this I can use a Dremel tool I can use a file I can use a Dremel tool or I can use a file but I've got to notch that line out um, if I had a scroll saw or even a jigsaw a jigsaw, I've got a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade, probably work. I've just got to be able to find a way to hold this as I do it. Let's just, I don't know if I can put the metal cutting blade down in here. Uh, I have to drill a little bit bigger hole. And that's something I don't want to get too big with. So, metal cutting blade may not work with a jigsaw, but let me go see what I have. Okay guys, this is a long shot. I've got a metal cutting a metal cutting blade and a jigsaw and I've got to cut this little groove out here and I'm going to just see I've got it locked in a vise probably won't be stable enough but I don't want to bend it or mess up the edges so we're going to try it and see just hope and pray well I can't believe that worked but as you can see I've got one side notched out and let me go grab my pen now here's the pen that I need to be able to fit down in there it's gonna have to be a little bit wider all right that's gonna 
probably be pretty good for that side. Now I've got to go in, I've got to cut this other side out. Now then let's take this, take it out, move it around, and I'm just going to put it right back in the vise. I'm going to make it snug. I don't want to bend it or mar up my edges too much, so what I'm going to do is then I'm going to take my Okay, now what I want to do is I want to make sure it'll fit down in there and it won't slide back and forth. And there it is. I can't believe that worked, but it did. Okay, got my pen done. That there was the part that I was worried about. Take that out, go take it to the flapper wheel, knock off all the little rough edges, and uh, then we're almost done. Now, there was the worst part, just getting that notch in there. I'm going to have to make the hole bigger, of course, for the, the uh, shaft of my trolling motor. But uh, that's not a problem just to drill that out. So, so I've, got, I've drilled both my holes in my plates. Now, remember, I'm going to weld these together. Now, I have found the center in my, uh, in my prop in the prop blades you know it got right in the middle i've made a i've punched it with my punch so that i know exactly where it's at and now i'm going to go drill it with a 2364 follow me over here Drill this in this middle with a 2364. Now I don't have a glove, but I'm gonna put a rag on this thing so it doesn't spin and cut my fingers. This will be the center of my my prop. Alright, got it through. Alright. Got a little bit of a burr on the back side as you can see. I'll take it to the flapper wheel knock that off that way it'll be good and smooth and won't cut cut me <clears throat> okay we're gonna go out we're gonna fit them and just dry do a dry run see how they they look All right, so I'm just going to get a dry run and see how this thing fits. We see that this one will go right, right here. This one will go over it. Now that's going to end up being together, and that'll keep that that blade from moving. This one will go right here, and we'll put the washer back on, and then you're going to end up putting the nut on like that and that right there guys i will use some aluminum weld and stick this together that right there will probably um then i've got to put my cups on each end that'll be my my splasher prop today i'm back over here at my vise and i've got my splasher prop pieces that i'm going to use some aluminum weld the stuff here that you get at Harbor Freight, Aluma Weld, which is supposedly, once you put things together with it, it's got a 40,000 pound PSI. And this Aluma Weld is really strong. I've used it in the past, but I'm gonna use it to hold my three pieces together. But before I do, I've got to clean all three pieces with some acetone and make sure that the pieces are really clean so that I can stick them together, all right? Now they're gonna go together like this, I'm going to put this one in here, just squeeze it in there like that. I'm going to put, put that one in there. They're going to go together like this, this, and this. That's going to be my three pieces, and they're going to end up becoming one piece. All right? Now, those three pieces uh, will make up the spinning mechanism for my splasher prop. And I'm going to have to line up these holes exact. So what I'm going to do is the drill bit, the 2964 drill bit that I actually used to make the hole that fits, I will end up 
putting it in here when they're all done and I will make sure that they all I'll make sure that they all line up exactly for the shaft on my trolling motor all right and then I'm gonna weld these together and then take this uh, this uh, bit out but that's just gonna line the ho line the holes up for me okay but first things first I've got to take it apart and I've got to, got to take it apart and I've got to clean each one of these parts with acetone and then once you use acetone make sure you get it away from your work area so that a spark won't hit it or nothing and I'm gonna take my acetone this stuff evaporates really quick so I'm gonna put it on my shop towel and I'm just gonna really clean the area where I'm going to weld these things together I want to get all any dust grime dirt oils anything off of there that might and you can see you can see the the stuff that you wouldn't notice that's on there but I'm gonna get everything off of here that I can so that my, I'll have a, a really good contact area now my centerpiece I'm gonna really clean it up really well and now it's gonna have some scratches on it that's okay that's not a concern uh, mainly dirt grease anything that might cause this well not to work that's what you're trying to get rid of this one right here is really good and clean now because I'm going to be welding on both sides of this one I'm gonna clean both sides of it clean the other side all right now this is just some aluminum stock this is a half inch piece that I cut out with a hole saw this is a 3 16 inch piece that I cut out with a hole saw and then I drilled a hole and I grooved out the middle with a jigsaw I took another piece of eighth inch or 3 16 whatever it looks like and I've this is going to be my blades for my wheel I'm gonna clean this one up real good and as you can see I'm getting off quite a bit of stuff all right let me do one more dose of acetone really clean these things up because you want them to stick I'm gonna lay this one first ones first I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put this one on here first actually I think I can just stack them put my drill bit in here stack them like this that lines up the holes really good make sure it goes through see if I can get this one down on here yep. and that'll hold it now what I need to do is I need to go get a couple of little I've got some little C clamps and those C clamps will hold this all down flat while I'm welding it while I'm using the Aluma weld to, to put it together let me get those I'll be right back I got my two inch C clamps what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna really tighten these down on here as well as I can to hold these down on each side let me show you over here what I've done okay you can see I'm holding them all as I'm gonna put one on this other side as well and then I'll I'll start brazing them together with the Luma weld but I want them to maintain as close contact as possible so I'm really gonna crank these down so that I I can make sure that I have a really good flush fit all right now this Aluma weld it works in low temperatures which I say low temperatures it's about 700 degrees but this stuff uh, really I've used it in the past it really will this Aluma weld really will um, bond stuff together and, and no more pressure than this little prop will have on it especially with it having a a, a, a bolt through the middle with a nut on it uh, this right here will be plenty to use for that that uh that splasher prop take your um, acetone and get it out of here put the lid back on it and get it way away from any open flames you don't need to have an explosion when you're working on a project I'm going to put this over here, get it out of the way. I should be finished with it. Now, what I'm going to be using, guys, is I'm just going to be using this, uh, this benzomatic fuel. I'm going to be doing, using it because um, propane or this map gas, it, it burns really clean. Make sure you always wear 
safety glasses and gloves when you're dealing with this stuff. Put you back on the tripod so I can use both hands. I'm going to get you over here out of the way a little bit so that I can zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Alright, so I've got my gloves on. I've got my, my Luma Weld rod and I'm going to heat this up and it'll just melt. Now I'm just going to go around the edges and I'm not going to, I'm just going to go around the edges on one side and then the other. I'm going to do that so that it doesn't, it, I want it stuck. I want it on there, but I don't want there to be an issue with me getting this bit out of my project, okay? And I definitely don't want it to come up here and, and connect my C, C clamp to this, to this spinner prop. Turn on the map gas, you can hear it. Now aluminum really gets hot fast. It'll let, it'll let you know when it's hot enough. It's getting close. All right. I'm going to take off the mass gas. All right, guys. So I am going to pull out the cutting torch. And I'm going to just get a neutral flame and really get this thing going because it's map gas. For whatever reason is not wanting to cooperate let me get a neutral flame here all right i've got a neutral flame going This is much hotter. I can probably pull that. Okay guys, I've got it welded on there. That is red hot. I've got to let that sit for a little bit. Now I may have to put a little bit more on there. For right now, that's all I'm doing. So it's not the prettiest thing, but what I can do is I can go back and I can knock some of this off with the grinder so it, it's not out of balance so much. Uh, the other side worked much better. Let me give you a picture on the other side. The other side was hot enough that when I just touched to it, it made a pretty nice little bead just right around the edges. All right, so this is going to be on there, but I am going to let it cool before I unclamp it. This will this will be stuck, and uh, this will probably be all I need to do. I will probably turn it over and maybe heat it up again and do the the bottom side there. But I have. A straight shaft I was able to get my drill bit out uh, actually when it got hot it started slipping up and down and so uh, I was able to pull that out but anyway we have got the makings of a guys you never want to use water to cool this off just let it cool on its own uh, that way it has a better bond it's been a few minutes and uh, take my C clamps off it's still pretty warm, but it's not, it's not unbearable. Yeah, it's still a little bit warm. All right, so I've got my, my blade. I will probably come back and I may have to put some more right in there and right in there on the, the bottom side of this top piece. 
this right here, I'm gonna have to take my wire wheel or my flapper wheel and I'm gonna have to smooth that right there bulge out. But I do believe it is stuck. Got the bottles off. We should be good to go. Make sure my map gas bottle is off. I'm gonna let that one sit and cool for a little while. When that cools, we'll do a little clean up with the flapper wheel. Then we're gonna go try it out on the boat and on the trolling motor. So it's cooled off. As you can see, I've got a little bit too much material right here on this edge. So I'm gonna take my flapper wheel and I'm gonna grind that down. Same with this bubble right here. Try to make it just a little bit smoother. And I'm gonna also knock this down a little bit. But anyway, overall, I do believe it is on there. It's not gonna go anywhere. And that material is so light it probably won't make that big of a difference on a trolling motor uh, that's running halfway out of the water anyway. I've got a 60 grit flapper wheel on here. Okay, so I've smoothed it down and I've just knocked a little bit off. That may make a difference, it may not, but I just want it to, uh, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be perfect no matter what I do. But let's go take it out and let's go put it on the uh, trolling motor and see what it'll do because the next step is to attach these on each end. All right, that's gonna be my splasher proper. They're gonna end up being there, one facing the opposite way like that. Got them sitting here. That's gonna be the next project is how to connect those. But for right now, I'm gonna go and just dry fit it and test it on my trolling motor. Let's go see what we've got. All right, guys, we're out here at the trolling motor behind the boat. Now, in this, on this trolling motor, as you can see, I have a groove cut, and this pin is going to sit down in that groove like that, okay? That pin is going to sit down in there, and I, and that's what engages this thing and allows it to spin. What it does is it goes right through your your trolling molder shaft. All right. Stainless steel washer and then we take our lock nut. All right, I got my half inch wrench. We are gonna lock this on here. All right, now, as you can see, I've got, I'm gonna turn it and get out of the way. All right. It can go forwards or backwards. It's a pretty big, uh, uh, it's a pretty big, radius and circumference but once you get those cups on here that's going to give it about the right amount of timing to uh right amount of timing to make it work all right let's take that back off we'll go back in and us we're going to go back in and we're going to see how we're going to put figure out a way to put these cups on a inch ah that sucker's got a little bitty sharp burr on it right there. It'll cut you. It's that little bitty burr. I'm going to knock that off with the flapper wheel. That's pretty sharp. Take my pin out. As you can see, that just goes right down in there. And that's what engages my, my prop. Okay, I do believe we are good to go. I'm going to go knock these two burrs off right there. See those little burrs? Those things are sharp, as you can see. Right there, they got me. But they won't last, they won't be there next time. Okay, take the flapper wheel. There it is. All right. And when that's bolted on, that will also add additional strength to holding these things all together. Not only the weld, the aluma weld, but it'll also hold them all together with that slot. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I am going to attach these one inch end caps, PVC end caps that I have. I'm going to drill it out, and make a slot, because what I want to do is I want to go in one side, put this in the middle, and then I'm going to drill a hole through the middle and through this and pin it and then I'm gonna epoxy it in. 
Okay guys, so what I'm doing is I tried melting a hole in the edge, but I was able to at least score it. I'm gonna put this end cap in my vise, just snug it down. And what I did was I got a drill bit. This one's a 964. It's a little bit larger. It's a little bit bigger in diameter than my aluminum is, than my aluminum is wide, okay? Or thick. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my line scored. I'm just gonna go and I'm just gonna make me a mark or make me a, drill me a hole. Now I've got my groove cut in my end cap. That was probably easier and quicker than using a torch anyway. Let's see if it'll fit. A little bit more. PVC is pretty soft. All right, so that side is done. All right, take it out and we'll show you how it looks. So, as you can see, we've got our aluminum pushed through to our in our end cap. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the other side, okay? And then what I'll do, they'll both be in there the same amount. <laughs> what I'll end up doing is I'll drill through and I'll put a pin all the way through and then I'm going to epoxy that in and that pin will keep that thing from wobbling and the epoxy will hold it and keep it from sliding out and then I should have a really good plopper um, for my splasher prop. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing with the other end, end cap, but I'm going to do it for this end. All right, tighten this one up in the vise. Take the drill. And I want to make sure I start it about the same distance from the edge. A lot of people may not realize this, and you can't do this with steel, but the edges of a drill bit are very sharp. There's that side. They are facing opposite directions. I've got my splasher prop, okay? So when it spins, now I'm gonna go back now, and I am going to hold this in drill a hole through and pin this and then I will trim off the extra. I'm just going to use an aluminum welding rod that we have laying around here for uh, the pinning material then I can knock off the edge. If you use steel it'll just rust out. It's better to use aluminum. It's, all, it's going to all be aluminum once it's all said and done but there is going to be my splasher prop. So I've got my splasher prop in here. I'm going to push it in to where it's good and square. All right, I've got me some aluminum uh, rods these are just TIG rods. That way, uh, when I drill through, I'm going to drill all the way through the, the cap, through the plate, and then I'm going to drill through the other side, and I'm going to put this, this rod in here. It'll hold it, and it'll stabilize it while uh, I put epoxy on it. Now, I've got that side. Slide our aluminum rod through. And I'm just going to bend it, bend it over. That'll hold it in for right now. Later on, after I get this epoxied in, I'm going to, I'll trim these edges. All right. Turn it over. As you can see down in there, it's got the pin through the aluminum. And that'll keep that from slipping off. The epoxy is going to support it once it's uh, partially filled with epoxy. Uh, but anyway, using aluminum, I don't have to worry about that thing. I don't have to worry about that thing uh, having a problem and rusting out. And not only that, if you use carbon steel on on aluminum, you'll find out it it does. They don't they don't go well together. Okay, that side is drilled through. Push my rod through. Bend it. Now that one's done. So now I've got my 
plopper prop secure. Now the, the goal is I have got to go in and number, you see these face different ways because they're going to spin and they're going to hit the water. So you have to put these and mount these separate, uh, these separate ways or opposite ways. So now I'm going to go in. I'm going to start working on my epoxy and my and my cup. All right, guys. So I've got some NP1 uh, Master Master Seal NP1. This stuff is like is basically like liquid rubber. If you ever have to seal up something on a roof, this is the best stuff I've ever seen. Helpful hint. But I don't want to. And so what I'm going to do is I don't want. I'm going to use this steel stick that I bought. It's a JB Weld steel stick. I'm going to use this to secure my aluminum rod in the hole to my aluminum. But what I'm going to do is I am going to fill part of the hole up with this with this uh, NP1 because I don't want to use all of this stuff. I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, NP1 in this thing. I'm just going to put a little bit of caulk around this thing to hold it square in the hole. Now I'm doing that because I don't want to have a lot of weight in this thing so it won't be hard on my trolling motor. And you could probably just use NP1. This stuff is pretty uh, pretty good when it comes to waterproofing and sealing and all that. All I'm doing is I'm taking up a little bit of space with some lighter material before I use the steel stick. That's all I'm doing because the steel stick is going to hold my aluminum to get all my aluminum to each, to everything. I just don't want to uh, use it for the full amount so that I'll have enough room to I'll have enough material to use. All right. So after I've gotten that down in the holes and I've got it set, as you can see, I'm going to show you. I want to make sure that these have chance to set up, spread out take up some space. I'm not going to fill this thing completely full, but I am going to spread it out, take up some space. This stuff right here, when it sets up, it's just a liquid rubber is all it is. But I'm just going to set that one up. I'm going to set it to where it's right exactly square. As square as possible. Just eyeballing it. And that, that one I'm just going to let set overnight. All right. I'll come back a little bit later do the other side. I'm going to let this one set up a little bit. Okay, so I am going to use my steel stick here that I, that I bought. And uh, now I've got my, my putty is set up down in there, my uh, caulk. That's just the initial amount. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some JB Weld to put me a small layer in there. Make sure I cut about an inch off, as you can see. Cut about an inch off. I've got my gloves on. Now, all right, so as you can see, it's black and it's gray. You knead it together until it's one uniform color. And I'm just going to knead it together with my fingers. Take that paper off. Knead it together with my fingers until it is all one color. And uh, it may take a, a minute or two. But once I get this kneaded together, I'm going to place it down in my, I'm going to place it down in here to hold this in an exact spot and supposedly this stuff will set up in about five minutes and uh, it completely hardens within an hour so we are going to we've almost got it to where it's completely all one color all right and i didn't take a whole lot because what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna take about half of it and I'm going to put half of it on this side. Now the reason I'm using this instead of caulk is because I've got aluminum on this side and I've got an aluminum rod through the middle there and I'm going to push it down in there and I don't want to completely fill this up with this this JB weld. The reason is because I don't need the extra weight on my propeller all I want to do is just push it down in there to where that rod that comes is, is being held in there does not come out. And when that hardens, that will hold that that will hold my my uh, aluminum rod in there along with my aluminum pin, and that will. 
keep that from being removed. So we are going to push that into the corners as far as we can on both ends. And that gives me a, a good balance for my, my stability on my cross arm here. Okay guys, so I've got my NP1 and it's set up pretty good down in here. Uh, now I'm gonna do like I did the other end. I'm gonna take my steel stick, my JB Weld steel stick, take my stick off, uh, sticker off the end. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna cut about an inch of material. And like before, I'm gonna put my little sticker back on the end so it won't dry out. I'm gonna put it back in my container, put the lid on, and put it back in package. So now, like I did before, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna knead this together. Knead it, knead it, knead it until it all becomes one color. All right. All right, now what I'm doing is in my, I've got my piece of aluminum here and I've got my piece of, my piece of uh, aluminum rod going through holding it. I've got it pinned in. I'm going to take, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to half this. I'm going to take, put this, take it in half. And I'm going to put half of it on this side and work it down in there. Half of it on this side. All right, so what I'm going to do, really work it down in there, and that will, once that sets up, that's going to really secure that piece of aluminum and that rod that's going to secure those as they go in there, all right? But I'm really going to push it down in. And once that sets up, I may put a little bit more NP1 on it. I don't know for sure yet. Just going to sort of play it by ear. But I've got that worked in. Got that all set up. All right. I wouldn't need more than that in there, but as you can see, I've got that in. This side's already it's set up, so it's pretty hard. I will probably put some more NP1 in there and uh, just to seal my, my uh, JB Weld, but right now, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, so I've got my splasher blade. Once that is all set up, then I'll trim these ears off my, I'll trim these ears off my aluminum, and that way it'll, it'll be there, okay? Let that sit over time. Take these off. So what I did guys was I had a pin, I have a pin that goes through here. I clipped it off and now I'm just gonna flatten it on each side, make a head on that aluminum pin and that'll, that's called peening. I'm gonna peen that pin and now that pin can't slip out. It hold, it'll hold my, my uh, splasher prop together and uh, I've got the uh, JB Weld down in there, and we're gonna go see how it looks on the on the uh, prop on the uh, trolling motor. The thing that holds your prop on and makes it spin is you've got this little pin. It goes through this hole right here on your trolling motor, and then you see my slot right here. My slot will fit right in to that. All right, that engages it. I right, stick it on place my washer on and then I put my nut on and I'm going to tighten it down and I'll show you how this thing works. Tighten it down to where there's no wiggle in it. Alright, that'll hold it on. Now, I'm going to Put the trolling motor on. That's called a splasher prop, and that'll help you keep the stripers underneath your boat. But with my splasher prop, I can go forward or backwards with it. 
but now I've got a prop that'll work. I just you'll just want to run it as slow as you can, and uh, we're good to go. We're ready to go striper fishing. Now that thing right there will throw some water on you. <laughs> Actually, hello guys. Watch my video on how this thing performs on my short video for splasher props. It, it'll amaze you how well it works. Please like and subscribe.